And welcome to the first episode of Tuma Sound. I'm your host, Al Tuma. And um, this is the first show, so give myself a big round of applause. I finally got to do something. <laughs> Today, I have, <laughs> have a treat for you. I have a legendary actor in the house tonight, and we're going to sit down and chop it up for 60 minutes. And um, hope you enjoy what we're talking about. My host, uh, my guest today is Mr. Stephen Williams, currently appearing on the uh, Showtime series, The Shy. And, um, man, tell me something about that character, man, because you, you sound like you're having fun playing him, Steve. Hugh is absolutely awesome. Yeah. For those of those, those people who have, um, who have not seen The Shy, yeah. uh, Quentin Dickinson is my character. Right. Uh, I'm going to be messing with Al throughout this show, too, <laughs> this being his first show and all of them. <laughs> you better be good, too. You better be good. Uh-huh. Now, Quentin is a, um, uh, first of all, it's a Showtime show, yeah. you know, created by Lena Waite and executive produced by her and Common and uh, a few other people. Um, it's uh, It's got a terrific cast, a cast of yeah. young people. Yeah. We've got a demographic that's awesome. I mean, it goes from, you know, 10, 11, 12-year-olds to, you know, the... the yeah, to folks my age and, and older. <laughs> yeah, they so we've got a, we got a wide range of uh, wide range of viewers, you know. And it's yeah. a um, Lena likes to call it a coming of age story. Yeah, you know, it's putting a face on some of this violence and stuff that's happening in Chicago. It's mm-hmm. it's like telling you how these kids became drug addicts or doctors or lawyers or pimps or right. killers or da, da 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 da. You know what they go through every day. Yeah, uh, it's Chicago life, man. It truly yeah. is Chicago life and. Quentin is a retired street boss. He's a retired. guy that used to run it. You know, one of my uh, one of the catchphrases. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm hoping it's going to be a catchphrase. Quentin yeah. says to one of the boys, "He said, what do you do?" The boy says, "Well, you hustle a lot, don't you?" Yeah. Said, "No, man, I run shit." Yeah. You know, did so. it convincingly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's but he comes back to town. Yeah. For those of you who haven't seen it, I won't spoil it for you. Quentin <laughs> comes back to town, and then all hell breaks loose. You know, he's yeah. he's back there for a purpose, right? You know, and uh, he's uh, I like the character. Me and um, uh, one of our executive producers and director, David Rodriguez. Mm. Um, I absolutely love this man as a director and uh, right. and as a buddy now, but he's a sp- is responsible for us creating, you know, for the for the Quentin that we created. Yes. I give David as much credit uh, as a director and, and producer as I do myself as an actor. You know, yeah. he created this this charming, <laughs> this charming he's, killer. Yeah, he, that's what I'm saying, <laughs> man. That's got to be a fun ass role to play here. Old ass man, and he killing kids. <laughs> <laughs> you know, every time I read a script where he did something horrible, I went, damn, you know, Quentin ain't nothing nice, is he? <laughs> uh, it was, uh, it's a lot of yeah. fun. But you, you're from Chicago, right? I'm from Chicago, yeah. yeah. Chicago is, I like to call Chicago uh, mm-hmm. home. Mm-hmm. My birthplace is Memphis. Okay. I'm uh, Memphis, Tennessee, but I grew up in Chicago from, yeah. you know, the time I was 10, 11 years old on. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, I like to call it home. It's, uh, yeah. Well, you know, cool we, place, we look at it, like the violence that's going over there, and, like now. What what was it like when you was growing up? Oh, when I was growing up, uh, it, it was nowhere near. You know, you've heard baby boomers said before. We used our hands. Yeah. You know, you got you in fought. a fight. Yeah. yeah, you fought. I mean, the, 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 the most lethal thing we had was probably a knife. You know what I'm <laughs> yeah, saying? If exactly. That, if that, yeah. and uh, and most kids didn't know how to use them no damn way. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, but now it's just, uh, it's ugly, man. You know, with the, with yeah. the guns in the schools and kids coming into schools, gunning down whole classrooms. Whole I mean, what, what's going on? I mean, I don't know. they putting in the water? That's what I was about to ask you. No, no, I just it, looked it, it actually, up today. Actually, was, there is a. Uh, there seven was, niggas got killed over the weekend right. just this week. There is a study uh, I read about or saw, you know, some. Uh, media stuff uh, mm. about lead, lead in the water, yeah, and lead does cause uh, a, yeah. a brain kind of malfunction, it, right. and it, it attacks the the section of the brain that um, that uh, governs uh, violence. Yeah, you know, and uh, yeah. so when I, when people say there's something in the water, there may be something in the water. <laughs> you know, what I'm saying? and plus we've got what the examples that I think young people have today mm. are horrible. Horrible examples. You know, media teaches a society how to behave. 
Yeah. And the stuff that we see on the media every day and kids see, the games are extremely violent. Right. You shit know, like Grand and, uh, Theft Auto and, just and all the shit that shit. they call reality. Yeah. You know, the uh, everybody's behaving badly. I mean, we live in a culture. I like to say this. We live in a culture where there's a show on, for instance, yeah. that grown-ups insult each other for entertainment. <laughs> you know what that show is. You folks probably know what that show is. <laughs> yeah. But grown-ups are insulting each other as entertainment. Right. And a bunch of other grown-ups are sitting around watching this shit right. and laughing. That's... Yeah. <laughs> You know, as a sensible person, I, I can, I can, I get it. Yeah. But I, but I think that it it does leave an impression on a lot of young people. Mm. They think that's the way to behave in society. Yeah. That it's okay to right. insult your fellow man. Exactly. You know, to be rude to your fellow man. To right. be, you know, mm-hmm. they think that that's normal. That's cool. Right. Based on, you know, the media stuff that we get. Mm-hmm. There's so much stuff we get through the media. It's just bad behavior, man. It goes and it goes back. It, this this <laughs> is a funny country. There was a show on the air. I was part of the beginning of a, a network where a show on the air where the the wife uh, was a lazy slot that didn't, didn't cook. <laughs> Husband had a piss poor job. The daughter was a whore. You, yeah. know, you know what that show was. And it became one of the popular shows. Most popular shows on the planet. Yeah. Great we, entertainment. Yeah. But again, what kind of example are we putting out are there? Are we putting out there for, you know, society to emulate? Uh, yeah. Like that. Mm-hmm. Now, I know you, because uh, uh, going back to, to stay with, with Chicago for a minute, because uh, like I said, I don't understand how it happened. Barack is right there. Farrakhan is right there. Kanye, 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 Kanye West. And Kanye. he's from Chicago. Kanye, yeah. Kanye. How do you feel like about them statements that he made about slavery was a choice? Um, about uh, who? Sl- he's a, he's I, a, I have no idea. First of all, you have to understand, I, I live in the 18th century. Yeah. I very rarely watch anything other than old TV. I have no interest. <laughs> <laughs> I have no interest in most other shit that's going on on the planet if it doesn't concern me. Right. So I have not heard yeah. what Kanye said. You know, I'm not a fan. I'm not a, um, uh, I don't do TMZ and media and da 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 da. And mm. I just don't care. If it ain't got nothing to do with me or a paycheck, right. I don't care. Yeah, that type of bullshit. I feel <laughs> you <right. laughs> I got enough problems yeah, worried of about, my own. Exactly. I got enough yeah. life to live of my own. Yeah. Living by carrying <laughs> concerned with somebody else, with somebody exists, else do. who has nothing to do with me and does not contribute anything exactly. to my existence, yeah. you know, to my health, my comfort. Right. So nothing. I don't know. But what did he say? <laughs> he would piss black people off as he said slavery was a choice. It sounds like a choice. Because he's like, yo, it's 400 years and all y'all over there, 400 years, that sounds like a choice. Oh, he was making some sort of metal, yeah, you know, meta, yeah, whatever the word I was trying to use. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's mental slavery is what he had to oh, be saying oh, about okay. it. Was, you couldn't be talking about nobody voluntarily got on the <laughs> fucking boats and got on this shit. No, man, and then like that at all. Yeah, well, there is a, um, uh, you know, having not heard what he said, I, I mm, that's I pretty get, much all it is. I get a little bit maybe of you know based on what you just said of mm-hmm. uh, of. Um, of what he's talking about. I mean, we, but it's not so much choices. We are the only group that came here involuntarily. Right. Okay. Right. And with that trip came the separation. Our separation has been really complete almost. Mm -hmm. They did it one. They took our language, our culture, our religion, you know, separated families. Yeah. There was nothing to every other Ethnic group that comes here comes here voluntarily, Voluntary. number one. Mm-hmm. Uh, and number two, they try to keep their families together, their cultures together, their da 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 together. Right. You know, we've been separated mm-hmm. uh, so completely right. that um, yeah. it's one of the things that it, it ripped us apart. It, it really did. It really did. And man, you bust. It's like you just, you've been around forever. And and then I like to know some of the, the secrets that you, I mean, how do you just, just the longevity? Drugs and alcohol. Drugs, <laughs> Drugs and alcohol. Preservatives. Preservatives. <laughs> Preservatives man. Pow, pow. Uh, I've just been blessed. Yeah. I'm blessed, Al. You know, mm-hmm. it's, um, 
It's been a long, uh, it's been a long road. It's being a long and wonderful road. Right. You know, I like to say that I have not worked a day in my life since I started this business. I don't, yeah. I don't find this to be work. It's a, it's an absolute joy. Right. Uh, the work that's involved here is actually getting the job. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. Uh, once you've gotten the job, uh, it, it's a, it's the creative process is just a lot of fun. Yeah. Just a lot of fun to work with some really, really creative people over the years. Yeah. Is you some work with people and, uh, and I've been blessed. Like I said, I've been blessed to be able to work. God dropped this talent in my lap, and then he started dropping opportunities in my right. lap. Right. Because uh, you And I go out and do it. Yeah. 21 Jump Street with Johnny Depp and Bernie Mac. He was the father-in-law oh, in there and all that. And I ain't going to ask you because I saw, I'm not going to make the mistake of doing with some of the motherfuckers. What's it like working with Johnny, with Johnny <laughs> Depp? Well, you need to ask Johnny Depp what the fuck is like working with Stephen Williams. What is it like working with Stephen Williams? Yeah, I go back starting with, uh, I guess it started with Blues Brothers. And uh, yeah. Cooley, Cooley High, <laughs> yeah. Cooley High, and then the, and then the TV series start, and uh, and God rest his soul, my favorite guy, one of my favorite guys uh, that was on the planet, Stephen J. Cannell. Yeah, I worked for him for a long time, just about all of his shows, you know, with A Team, and yeah, you know, just about all of his shows uh, in, mm-hmm. in the early days. Right, um, <clears throat> five years on Jump Street. Uh, uh, hey, you like, like, you like the black Bill the Bixby, uh, black the, like the black Robert Urich. Always, got <laughs> always, always. Yeah, I've had eight. Uh, I think I've had eight series in which I've been a series regular, or yeah. or the title character. There's a title character in two of them, Lynx. Right. Uh, it was created by Tim Reed, Susan yeah. Bell's Heels, mm-hmm. and uh, a short-lived show called Black Jack Savage: The Hundred Lives of Black Jack Savage. I was a title character. Yeah. Uh, and. Uh, and then the recurring stuff, the X Files is Mr. X, yeah, and Rufus that. and Supernatural, and yeah, you know, and L.A. Heat. I was, uh, you know, oh yeah, I remember we did that L.A. One Heat. Too. Me and Wolf Larson. Yeah. We, had, <laughs> we had a lot of fun. We were the stars of that show. Yeah. yeah, but man, being like the seasoned veteran that you are, and being in the, you know, being into this as long as you, because I've never really heard anything like you know you in Hollywood. You know, there's always some type of scandal and shit going on, but I've never heard nothing on your reputation at all. When you hear shit like this shit, you know, <laughs> what's going on with Bill Cosby, how have you avoided this shit, man, for like 50 years and no, no scandal at all? By not doing stupid shit. <laughs> that's, that's really easy to avoid. Just don't do stupid shit, okay? I, I, don't, I don't get it my damn self, some of these people, you know, yeah. to... Not only doing it, but getting caught. Right. I mean, let's face it, man. Like I said, I'm a baby boomer, so I've been there, done that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But I I keep it all at home. Exactly. I keep it at home when I see these people getting caught out by, you know, these cameras and the paparazzi and caught out doing stuff or out drunk or out, you know, yeah. or getting out of cars and showing coochies. And <laughs> it's just, <laughs> it's insane. You know what I'm saying? Stay yeah. home. Stay exactly. the hell home if you're going to do certain things. Yeah. Stay the hell home and do them. Mm. You know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I'm sure as long as Be you've been this business, I'm sure you didn't you didn't kick it out around. You you you've been around him. I mean, I it's, it's hard for me to say about whether he did what he did or not. I do know that that stuff was you know pretty much leaked. With, there was it called Spanish Fly and. All this type of oh, shit. Back in the 60s, we, 70s, we, people we, did shit like that. Oh, yeah, we, we come from an era that uh, here's my take on some of it without you know, bad-mouthing anybody or, yeah. or creating any enemies. During that era, a lot of that behavior was widely accepted. You right. know what I'm saying? Everybody's coming forward now with sexual harassment. Now I was sexually harassed. I was da 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 But a lot of that behavior was widely accepted by the women during that era. This is the era of free love. Right. You know what I'm saying? This is the hippies and da 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 Woodstock and da 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 right. And that so-called drug, Quaaludes. Mm-hmm. Quaaludes was fashionable back then. <laughs> and I will guarantee you that at least 50% of those women did that shit voluntarily. Yeah. Bill ain't slipped them nothing. Yeah. You know, they did it voluntarily. Let's party, baby. Okay, bam. You yeah. drop a quaalude. Now you wake up tomorrow morning with a sore butt, ass, and vagina, <laughs> and you don't really, you don't really remember what happened. Okay, <laughs> and you got that memory blank. Yeah. You know, all these years they've had that block of memory that oh, I went over. And, and see, Cosby was married. They knew he was married, so exactly. it was wrong in the first place. Yeah. Okay? 
You're yeah. dealing with a married man. You haven't found a man. So you're not blameless. Right. You know, you're not blameless. And <laughs> the, 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 my take on it, they went in, they went into the relationship to get something out, out of it. Yeah. A role or a part of it. But yeah. you woke up the next morning and so I didn't get what you went for. Right. And you don't remember what you did. Exactly. You but know? one of them remember. But then he, one of them remembered. He gave her 3.8 million. <laughs> right. And where's my fucking Everybody money? Everybody else jumped on the bandwagon. They uh. all started to remember <laughs> after that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So you know that's uh, you know they're, they're not blameless. Right. Let's just say that a great deal of them are not blameless. Yeah, you know? I can believe that. I just uh, hate the way they did him, though. But they could at least put these bitches' pictures up back when he's fucking about <laughs> not, not no eighty year old granny. Yeah, he like he raped them. I mean, it's just a good. This is these are some of the ugliest white bitches I've seen in my life. <laughs> Look at those white bitches. Uh, they ain't gonna do him like that. Uh, <laughs> it's breaking uh, down. That's, I'm not making a t- tuck. No comment on Bill's taste. Uh, no, well, <laughs> yeah. well uh, maybe that's a pack he had with Camille. I don't know. I mean, I don't right, mind you doing it, nigga. Make it, sure that just make sure really the bitches really don't remember it. It is really, really strange. Though. The uh, <laughs> I, I find it amusing that a great deal of the, the guys who've been caught up in stuff like Tiger and you know, yeah. have some incredibly beautiful queens at home. You know, yeah. but sometimes you can't get your queen to do that freaky dicky shit that <laughs> yeah. Yeah. we like to do. <laughs> so Why you would you ever? Outside, uh, I, I don't uh, see myself marrying one that ain't gonna do that. <laughs> now you, uh, <laughs> you ain't gonna do it. We can't get married. <laughs> Here's my list, baby. We can't. Now, if you cannot handle yeah. some of this, Steve, let I've me been, know. Yeah, I've been I've been engaged thirty two times. <laughs> you've been married. How many times you been married? Once. Once. Uh. I don't know why anybody would do that more than once. Because <laughs> 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 it just kills people. Look and I was married to a fabulous woman too, by the way. She's yeah, I know. You um, you don't uh, mention her name no, right no, now, but I know she's you know she big time actress in it, didn't it? She was. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, it's a good, just good human being. Good human being. We're still friends to this day. We're still buddies, you know. Yeah. But the the, the Constitution, because I've heard that you could get, man, you don't have the marriage license. I've told, it was told that it was like a marriage license, man, is, is really for people to get in your, the, for the law to get in your pocket. You can you can draw up a contract with a person to get married with that the law has nothing yeah, to do with I, anything. I, but I, a marriage, I've never I, quite I, understood the institution of, of, of marriage the way it's laid out. I mean, yeah. why, why get the state involved? Right in your relationship, um, and even if um, even if you're going to have children, you know, I've always said uh, one of my philosophies has been: if you're going to have children, then you know, get married, have children, the, 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 give the name, right. you know, be a family. Uh, but I think two people can share love; they can share homes; they can share a whole bunch of stuff without the state getting involved yeah. in your relationship. Now, having said that, let me also say that there is a, a, a definite upside for women. You know, men are dogs. <laughs> I ain't, man. In a we, sense, <laughs> men and women need to be protected. They do need to be protected. Now, you know what would happen if you know, a woman dedicates 20 years, 30 years of her life to a situation and raises kids and da 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 and all of a sudden the dude wants to step out and leave her high and dry. You know, many men think like that. They really don't think fairly. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They don't think fairly. Mm-hmm. Um, by the same token, there's a there's a... Part of that institution says you don't deserve half of my shit. No, just no, because. No. <laughs> da, 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 da. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Men get raped in the process too. Yeah. So it's um, just bludgeoning. But like I said, I, I don't I don't think I'll ever have to worry about it again. I did my. <laughs> I did my. That's what I don't like about the whole institution, man. If I got to get there, if I got to go in front of a minister to get into this shit, but I got to go in front of a judge to get out and get out of no, it. Right? Hell and no, no, I'm gonna go right that back in that same line ass judge. Yeah. I mean the minister. Hey. And you spoke. You ain't got no business asking nobody whether who thinks they should not be married. You a man of God, motherfucker. You <laughs> ought to be breaking this up right now. <laughs> if it don't work, I'm coming back to fuck you up. Yeah. But the minister yeah, never yeah, gets any type of criticism about what he does at all. He's gone. But marriage, man, no, I, I make it hard. Like I said, I've been engaged 32 times, and it's a, a three-year gig, a grace period. Oh, so you're a serial, uh, a serial engager. Huh? Well, I, I, I know a lot of thieves. So how did you get married at, and, out of any of those 33? No, because no? they always fucked up during the grace period. Uh-huh. You got like three years. This shit ain't working in three so years. So 30-something, and you th- think it was all them. It, it's 
No, they None fucked None of this up. is on you. <laughs> they <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, you know, you All of them got a ring. I'm not taking sides. They still I'm got the ring. Right? Just, just ask it. Oh, it ain't paying it out after three years. Why would I go make this legally binding? <laughs> 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 yeah, there's certain things that you just shouldn't do. You know, uh, ask them on that. Now, 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 I'll marry Oprah tomorrow. And I know if we get a divorce, that I got her ass up against the goddamn wall. Hey, see, Oprah don't want my $13. Yeah, I can get is, some more. There's just some things you should always protect. You know, it's like direct deposit and direct payments, you know. And, yeah. I, I never understand that concept. Why would I give anybody permission to go into my bank account? Right. <laughs> on a monthly basis. I, I do not get that concept at all. No. No, I'm not doing automatic nothing. No, <laughs> hell no. <laughs> so I feel that way about marriage. Okay, I do, <laughs> man, because I've never been able. I mean, I mean, I've now I've fucked off two of them. Those were the other the 20, 30 of them. Middle of the road. There were two that was actually pretty well off. Now I wish I had a goddamn married them bitches. I actually had, had one of them. I talked in the head with a goddamn abortion. This bitch is on TV every day. So I feel like a damn fool. Now what makes you think they were taking care of you though, Al? I mean. It's- they was doing it then, Steve, and I had nothing. <laughs> <laughs> what you got, what you got, what you got going, man? Nothing but me. <laughs> A lot of potential. Uh, As we're here with Stephen Williams tonight, tall dog legendary dog. Steve Williams. I'm trying to get them record what the fuck I'm doing. I need to cuss. Did somebody go let him? Hold on. Yeah, man. <laughs> you interrupting the fucking show, nigga. I told you I was going to be on at 5.30, so you're late. So if you're at that by the gate, I'll send body back there. Like, like, stop calling me, man. You're fucking up the show. <laughs> Stand at the goddamn... If you at the gate, I'll send somebody back there, goddammit. They telling me to turn my shit off. <laughs> somebody go let him in. <laughs> Turn it nothing off because I'm recording my own shit. I, I, I know what I'm doing. My phone, turn your shit off. <laughs> <laughs> now, where was me, Mr. Williams? I have no idea. <laughs> You're running this. You're running this. Run it, Al. Run it. Yeah. Oh, what well, um, We were somewhere when we were talking about right before marriage. And I wanted to ask you about this, man, because I really feel like... He, Fuck black men being goddamn endangered species. I really feel like heterosexual men are endangered species. We're being came out by women with this Me Too shit and then the gay shit. I really believe, man, that they heterosexual men is under, under siege. Mm-hmm. I have no comment on that whatsoever. Once again, <laughs> I, I don't know what to say about that, Al. I don't know what you're asking me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've not taken a poll to see, you know, who outnumbers who, heterosexual men or homosexual men. Well, I guess, well, let me put it this way. When Each I see their them own. Coming, at the, coming at cars like they coming at him, I mean, what's the other guy, they, they, the big time white boy, who's that, Weinberg, and oh, then they got uh, Russell uh, Simmons. Harvey, Harvey. Yeah, Harvey, Harvey, all these Harvey, guys, I mean, they coming at big time rich motherfuckers, man. So what is this motherfucker with $17.13 in his pocket? You know, I don't say it at What? Uh, uh, well, no, who's going to come at you for, you know, like I said, mm-hmm. why wouldn't you come at them if you're going to come at anybody? Why not them? Like you said, why would I come at you? You ain't got no money. (laughs) But I'm just saying, if they could do a a wealthy motherfucker like that, man, broke, man, ain't got a chance. They ain't. They ain't. And you, you've Uh, never had, I mean, because I, I, no, like, again, I don't do stupid shit. Mm. Not stupid shit that, you know, people can see. Yeah. <laughs> like I hey, said, you know, I done been to some wild parties. Shit down to a minimum? Yeah, wild parties at you your know? house, but you, it was always at your house. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it was always at my house. That's right. That's at my house. A lovely house at that. Um, <laughs> and um, and as, as a heterosexual man, I don't feel threatened at all mm. um, by anything except, you know, the, not being able to nail 22-year-olds <laughs> bothering me a little bit, but other than that, I'm good. Boy, you still got a little strength to be fucking around with 22-year-olds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's yeah, why yeah. you tired and what? Nah. Once a month, once a month, baby, 22-year-old. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so what, um, 
I mean, you you got the act and all this thing, all this type of shit locked down and everything, man. But um, you do uh, what? What do you um? You ever see yourself directing or doing anything? No, you know, you'd be a hell of a director. Steve. No, I um, I I like acting. I did. I, I directed the um the final episode of Twenty One Jump Street. You did. So I you know have had my directing experience. Yeah. I may do it again yeah. at some point. Mm-hmm. Um, what I learned during that process was how much I didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a great learning experience. Yeah. Um, and I kind of enjoyed it, but uh, right now I I just like acting. It's this. Yeah. People are always saying, you should do this, Stephen, you should do that. You should, no, I should do exactly what I'm doing. Yeah, what you, you want know, to do. I do not want to take on a heavy load. I'm not that... Mm-hmm. I don't, and I don't want to scatter myself all over the place. You know, and I've got a lot of acting years, good Lord willing. Mm-hmm. A lot of acting years left. Yeah. Um, you know, this is one of those jobs, acting, you can do until you drop. I met, yeah, exactly. I met a, a guy on, on set once. He was an extra. Uh, I called him scene enhancement personnel. <laughs> uh, but one of his specialties was playing a dead body. When they needed a dead body <laughs> instead of a dummy, it yeah. was one of his specialties. You know, he yeah. was a group that played dead bodies. So I like to say you can do this job up until you did. You can. I think know? Kevin Costner started uh, out doing that. He played a corpse. In <laughs> <the dead body. laughs> yeah, I mean, it's... Uh, uh, yeah, well, so how do you break it down? I mean, because at this point now, I guess, when you, you, you do an audition, but if you get the role... There's really no director telling you what to do. You just you're like Sam. I, Sam is the same nigga in everything. Sam just switches, <laughs> he just switches his look, and he's That's a yelling true. nigga no Turn matter what. Turn the volume down. Turn the volume down. <laughs> <laughs> Sam starts screaming. Yeah, but he um, just switches his look. But shit. But how do you break? How do you prepare? Well, if, if you're not if you're not playing a see, every every character is is when I look at it is me. Right. Every character is me as that mm-hmm. person. It's me reading those that writer's words. Right. And if you don't have to, if you're not playing an actual person, mm-hmm. like if I played Jackie Robinson or somebody, you know, mm-hmm. now I got to do some specifics. You know, you want to do specifics, and you want to get his manu- manu- man- mannerisms yeah. mm-hmm. down. You want to try and and um, uh, do maybe some vocal stuff that's you know yeah. like them. Okay. You, know, you want to bring. Um, but other than that, it's it's relating to the material. If I relate to the material, if I can see myself in that situation, right. whatever it be, and relate to that material, then I can give it something yeah. in front of that camera. Mm-hmm. You know, based on the writer's vision, it's a it's a team effort. Also, yeah, it's what a lot of people forget. Most actors get the the big accolades. Yeah, but it's a team effort. You know, you those that writer's words. What did he have in mind when he wrote those words? Mm. Can you put those across? That director's vision, uh, the pictures that are going to be around there. That producer's vision. What story? Yeah, you've all got to be telling the same story. Okay, you've got to be on the same page. Right. And the creative process comes when everybody gets together and tells that story. Right. You know, from the lighting person to the camera person to the sound person to the makeup person, the hair person, the entire crew. Mm-hmm. You know, it's one big collective team effort yeah. to put that thing all together. And then it goes to the editing room, and that's where a movie is really made. Right. You know, yeah. And you oh, yeah, can take right. a bad editing. performance and turn it into a decent performance in that editing room. You can take a great performance and mess it up in that editing room. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but for uh, me, it's just a matter of relating to the words. Mm-hmm. I relate to the words, and then if I've got that fellow actor in front of me giving me. You yeah, because I've heard it was like the, the most say, of Art we, Evans. We simply communicate. Yeah, because Art was a uh, Art Evans was Art he, Evans, he a wonderful actor. actor. For, yeah, he taught yeah. me for a while. He's like your ear, man. That's the that you, you, as long as you hear right, then you can you respond it, naturally. Right. Yeah, hear it and com- just just we we like to say don't get caught acting. Right, we like to say that do not get caught acting. Just be. Yeah, just be have mm-hmm. honest communication. Right, you know, and I like to tell young people if you have intent. Intent for me is a magical word because intent shows in your eyes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I'm scared of you. I intend to run. <laughs> I, I, I intend to kick your ass. I intend to come over and tell you. <laughs> it, it, it's in your eyes. And if the camera is right there, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. that'll come across. Exactly. As as you've got intent and honest communication. Okay. Yeah. A oh, man just woo. If I could just have a career, I'd like yours. Oh, keep doing it. And you it, kept just... your nose, I mean, just to keep your nose clean. 
Yeah, like I said, yeah. don't uh, just, <laughs> just I'm slick. I'm slick. You know, it's, it's like, yeah, keep it, keep it at home, man. Keep yeah. it undercover. Keep it at home. <laughs> Surround yourself with trustworthy people. I see so many people yeah, right. who come into the money, and all of a sudden their good friends are gone. The cats you grew up with, the chicks you grew up they're gone, and now you're surrounded by a bunch of, you know, yeah. Folks that you don't really know and a bunch of folks that don't necessarily have your best interests at heart, they're yeah. just there to gather what they can gather from the situation. Exactly. You know, so surround yourself with trustworthy people mm-hmm. and, um, and and just be common sense. Yeah. Just common exactly. sense. Exactly. Right, look at you. Use it. Know, this man has got been, I've been friends with, with 10, 15 years. He ain't got no problem with giving me no advice when he think I need it. And he ain't got no problem with cussing my motherfucking ass out when he think I need it. He's always been that way. Hey, man, yeah, straight up. So I don't want yeah. to be anything but yeah. straight up. Yeah, I remember honest. I came it's by your house one day crying and lamenting. I don't know whether it was a female problem or whatever. And I said something about the respect. I need to be respected. Oh, who the fuck told you you needed to be respected? <laughs> who told you that? I don't need to be respected. I, I need to be left, left the fuck alone. If I had to choose between being respected and being left the fuck alone, I'm going to choose being left the fuck alone. Yeah, fuck I must, respect. I must, I must have been going through something there. <laughs> <laughs> must have been going through something there. Yeah. Um, I, I, I appreciated the advice. Yeah. Before Listen, you, man, if you, you know, and when you said something about your, your career, if you really have a passion. I think passion is a magical word also. Yeah. If you have passion for anything, mm. um, you won't need a lot of advice. Right. You know, passion will drive you. Mm-hmm. You know, if you want to be a doctor, lawyer, actor, that you'll wake up one day and you'll be that. Yeah. If you've got the passion that has driven you there. Exactly. You know, so just just get up and keep doing. Yeah, just keep, keep moving. Keep doing. Yeah, yeah, keep moving, man. Keep doing yeah. no matter what it is. Keep doing. I've got it at my at my house now. I I put in a um I put in a little little putting green. I put in a little track for skating and biking and yeah. you know, put in my pool and da 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 da. da. And uh, and luckily I've got a little upstairs uh, over the garage, mm-hmm. but it's all about keeping moving. I mean, I think Dr. Gunther or something, one of the TV doctors said, yeah. you don't really need to go to the gym every day. Right. Just get up and keep moving. moving. Don't yeah. stop moving. So everything I've put at that little property is about movement of yeah. some sort. I heard you say that, you but know? yeah, one of the things I seen last uh, night when I was um, going over some of your stuff, you were saying that. Well, uh, I am where I am today to get to where I need to get. No, no. The saying is, you have to be where you, you are, are in order to get where you're going. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's how I look at stuff. So even if you find yourself in jail, in a hospital, or in a blah de blah wherever you are, right. I always like to say, you have to be there right now in order to get where you're going. <laughs> Simple as that. It's, exactly. a, it's just a step along the way, right. and some of those steps along your your travels and along your journey will not be pleasant. Mm-hmm. You know, you'll find yourself in mud holes and all you know, kinds yeah. of slosh yeah. and stuff, yeah. and then all of a sudden you'll find yourself at the top of that mountain you're trying to get to. So, exactly. You know, Nobody. embrace where you are. Mm-hmm. Embrace where you are. You know. You don't have to like it, but embrace it so you can get the fuck up out of there. Yeah. If you need be. I, I go by that motto. A lot of people say all good things come to an end, but I, for the longest I've been saying all, I, I guess because I have more bad shit, all bad things come to an end, too. Yeah, uh, well, there's a, there's a lot yeah. of sayings that, that, that I have altered a little bit for myself. For instance, I love the, uh, that which does not kill you. <laughs> will make you strong. No, bullshit. <laughs> that which doesn't kill you, your silly ass will probably do again. That's, that's my saying, okay? <laughs> that's my saying. I like it. My uncle had one. Jim, my uncle had one. Yeah. He used to say, um, you can fool some of the people all the time, all the people some of the time, but you can't fool all the people all the time. Yeah. Well, my uncle used to say, you can fool some of the people some of the time. Shit, that ought to be enough. <laughs> yeah, well, I love you. <laughs> I love you. Yeah, let's get to the real nitty gritty of these sayings. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, man, the holy spin. Euphemisms know. and right. shit. Yeah. <laughs> so that was the real saying. Yeah. 
So you did you, you you mentioned you was from uh, Memphis. Did you spend enough time there to realize how bad the motherfuckers was and you got out of there as a baby? Oh, no, well, it was not um it was not as bad uh, in Memphis because I heard Memphis was like wild wild west. Yeah, ain't that what they put years me, ago? Yeah. And even now it's like um but Memphis was not like that. I mean, I'm a baby boomer, man. I'm an old man. Um, yeah. And I grew up right outside of Memphis. I was born in Memphis, but I grew up in a little town called Millington, yeah. Tennessee, right outside of Memphis. My uh, my grandfather and my grandmother raised me. He was a Baptist minister and mm-hmm. worked at a naval base there and a sharecropper. Yeah. Um, so as a kid, I spent a lot of time on the farm. You know, I yeah. think my nearest neighbor was probably five or six or seven miles away. You know, so yeah. and I'm an only child. I was mm-hmm. a, I was an only child at that at that time. So. Um, you know, it was just me and my grandmother most of the time. Because Big Daddy was either, he was out in the field plowing, or, you know, yeah. digging up something, farming. Yeah, I know uh, about so that. And I would do that same kind of thing with Big Mama. You know, pick yeah. the chicken, slap the hog, <laughs> you know, chop cotton, uh, pick cotton. You yeah. know, the whole kit and caboodle. I was a farm kid. So yeah. so I stayed um, I stayed out of trouble because of that. Right. Uh, being being a, a farm kid, um, I developed a, quite the imagination too. Uh, growing yeah. up on a farm, because I didn't see television until I was like twelve years old, probably. What? Before I saw yeah. a TV set, it was all radio. Yeah, it was all radio. So everything, all of my images were in my head. You were listening to the mm. sounds, and you had to think up images in your head. So yeah. That that helped. Me, I think later on in life, that mm. helped me to be a creative, you know, more of a creative person. Yeah. Um. And again, it uh, it kept me out of trouble, uh, and, and just that kind of life. Um, you've you've heard about the Baptist ministers' kids. That, that, that. yeah, my it wasn't quite like minister. that. My grandfather yeah. would say, "Stevie, you want to go to church with me this Sunday?" No, nah, I don't think so, Big Dad. Okay, I'll see you when I get back. You know, mm-hmm. it wasn't that forced thing. Yeah, but you learn through watching. Mm-hmm. You learn by example, right? Dealing with uh, with folks like that. You know, the yeah. wholesomeness of it. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, one of the longevity things you said about me is a, a mm. good foundation, man. I ate organic foods. Because when I, when I started yeah. coming to Chicago, mm-hmm. I would go back to Tennessee every summer until I was 16 right. to visit my, my grandparents and my cousins and stuff down there. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that kept me out of trouble, too, in Chicago. Because right. I'm out of there during the summertime, which is when kids really get in trouble. When school is out during the summer, that's, you know, when a lot of shit happens. Yeah. But I was out of there every summer to go back down south. Uh, mm-hmm. Also, just health-wise, man, I ate truly organic food yeah. for the first 16, we, 17 years of my life. I, I know what you're talking Everything about. Everything was organic, Jordan. We my had brother. Gardens, man. You know, no body. frozen meat, meat None killed right there in the yard. Yeah. Vegetables grown with, with animal you know, manure for fertilizer, no chemicals yeah. in it. Truly organic eggs straight from under the chicken. You, you have know to what learn. I'm Milk straight out of the yeah. cow. Didn't have to be pasteurized and shit. Uh, I and remember also, the first time my dad tried to teach me how to, to kill a chicken, man. And, <laughs> and they eat back over there, they'd take him and rain them. Rain that neck, like, snap. I can't do no shit like that. Yeah. Like, hey, well, nigga, you go hungry four or five days. <laughs> <laughs> like, Cause ain't nobody gonna kill him for you. <laughs> oh, but we yeah, did yeah, the that over life there. Is, uh, <laughs> quite something. Quite something. Yeah, I wouldn't have traded it for anything. You know? Oh no! Oh no! So when you um, this was back what uh, back so you you went to Chicago when like the what forties fifties forties early late uh, early late mm. early fifties. Mm-hmm. Yeah, early fifties. I was uh, starting, yeah. starting to go to Chicago. Late fifties, early fifties. I started to go to Chicago. So you got this all, all from the, from the from the the the, the, the civil rights movement. Uh, oh yeah, I've been Malcolm X. You got to see all that firsthand. I have been. I have been. I like to tell. I you know just for the hell of it. I like to tell people, mm. young people, hell, like, you, you exist because of me. Me, <laughs> but for me, you wouldn't be. Now I've seen mm. and or, and or been a part of, mm. you know, a great deal of the major the major what we call revolutions, the civil rights. Civil sure. rights movement, you know, the mm. women's movement, the workers' movement, the gay movement. Right. I was there doing the inception mm-hmm. of all of these things, you know, Kennedy, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, you know, Gloria Steinem. Yeah. Um, I was there. Yeah. I was there. Uh, and uh, and um, part See? of it in one way or another. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it won't mention... <laughs> Won't mention all the way yeah, we, we, part of shit, but I was, but it, it, yeah, it, I was part of it, man. Yeah. I've watched the world change. I've watched the world change drastically, uh, from our from our technology to to the attitudes. Mm. You know, the attitudes of the world have changed. Just just mentally, people aren't. 
Uh, well, what you could do it with the because back then, because I, I I was cause I did my history and I read up on stuff, but they said, man, twenties to the fifties, black we as a whole, we was doing better than we are today when we before we started integrating with everything. We had our own professional teams. It was the Negro League. We had more businesses. We had more everything. But it seemed like we just got shot to hell once we started this integration shit, the civil rights shit, which was supposed to be human rights, but it got changed to civil rights. Did you see any distinct difference in, in what King tried to do as opposed to what we were doing? Did we have, you, would you, because you were on my mom's age, y'all came around 20 and 30, so y'all, you seen when black yeah. people really had shit. It, it's, it's, Again, it's that togetherness thing. It's that togetherness. We we were so separated. We don't seem to be able to to come together as a. Uh, I don't know. Not, I don't. I don't know how I want to say this, but we don't support each other enough. Sometimes, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We don't get behind each other and really, really give each other the the mental and financial and. Uh, academic uh, yeah. s- support mm-hmm. that 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 we should have. It's um, yeah. Now the world is going to hell. The world yeah, is going to hell exactly. at a handbasket. Yeah, do, do, do. Generally, <laughs> generally the world is going to hell in a handbasket, black, white, and otherwise. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's uh, I'm not real crazy about human beings. I ain't either, man. I'm, I'm telling you really what I stopped doing. Relative this. to the other species on the planet, we uh, seem to be the most destructive. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and for the most fucked up reason. You know, this is a cruel place. Mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong. This big ball of so-called big ball of water yeah. floating around in space. It, it, this living entity is a cruel thing. Yeah. Everything on this planet kills and eats something else in order to survive. Yeah, it's savage. So it's a yeah. vicious, savage yeah. place. Mm-hmm. But we have that choice of, of, and everything else does it for food. Right. You know, all the other animals <laughs> have to kill for food yeah. or to fuck. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> if you'll notice, most of the other animals have to fight to fuck. Yeah. And they only get to lion. do it once yeah, a year. Boy, Some of them get to do it once a year. <laughs> and then they got to fight somebody yeah. for it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's if lie. I had to do that for sex, man, I'd be oh I'm man, this end you. would be real big. It would be real huge. I was, it, 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 fuck, um, you know you gonna win. But but we're supposed to have that choice, that that reasoning. We're supposed to be able to not have to kill if we don't want to eat it. Right. <laughs> you know what yeah. I'm saying? Um we're supposed to be better yeah. than the viciousness that that the planet naturally is. Yeah. We're supposed to be able to overcome some of that that, mm-hmm. that violence that, uh, that yeah. the planet naturally is, and, and we don't seem to be able to do it. I I, I yeah. just don't know how some people are wired the way they're wired. You know what I'm saying? It's if you a, had told me that there was some dude, for instance, yeah. you know, out out uh, having uh, affairs yeah. with other dudes and then killing them and freezing <laughs> them and putting them in the freeze. I mean, Jimmy but, does. yeah, but we got people like that every damn day. <laughs> <laughs> Every, that was not even unusual anymore. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Well, this so, is weird. I'm not real crazy about human beings. I, 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 I became a misanthropic dude for like 10, 15 years. That is a hater of the human race. <laughs> fuck black, well, all you motherfuckers. I can't stand y'all. <laughs> Man, my motherfucking parents were having me, God damn it. <laughs> Why did I have to come through this bitch? <laughs> uh, but, you know, it's... Uh, this, like I say, like you, you, you mentioned other animals, they we don't they don't do shit like that. Lions, man, for example, man, them motherfuckers, it's at least five or six of them motherfuckers going through a battle royal, and that bitch will lay right down there, and whoever wins, you might be beat up and bloody, whoever wins, yeah, you get the fuck. Yeah, and you get to run the pack for the next And you better get on the pussy then, and the bitch will run with somebody else, but you're going to have to fight four or five motherfuckers to get some. <laughs> if you got to fight a nigga, four or five niggas before you fuck every night, we'd probably be, yeah, we, we'd ain't, be ain't, more ain't careful happening. with, you know, bringing the way we bring kids in the world. <laughs> See, that, that ain't, that, it ain't the problem with the kids. It's like how, how people get together and have sex, man. You ain't supposed to just got them fucking uh, conceive no child anywhere. You bitch <laughs> fucked in the bathroom with a club easy in the back of your car. You, know, you, have to, you, you have to bring kids here. You have to plan that shit. <laughs> I just yeah, got them so. going to the bathroom and bending somebody over. And my kid was conceived there. I can't expect him to be nothing but a piece of shit because he was conceived in the shadow. Yeah. Oh, man. So once again, here we're with the legendary Steve Williams. 
Stephen, that's Stephen. Stephen, Stephen, Stephen Williams. Stephen, yes, Stephen. yes, the legendary Stephen Williams. Now you living like, rumor in my own mind. Yeah. <laughs> what made you decide to, to, to do this, uh, to, to get into acting and everything? Did you ever? Did I you ever have a to. real job or anything? Or you just knew you always had. No, I um I, again, uh, it's a it's a blessing. I um I finished high school and uh, I worked a little bit after that. I got drafted. I was drafted into the army. I did a two year stint in the army. I got out of the army. I went to the post office and worked there for a little while. You know, that's a federal job. You know. And, yeah. And um, and again, this is an era. This is the '60s now. I'm in the '60s now, the late '60s, and yeah. that was a wonderful, wonderful era. And I had a buddy of mine who was a photographer with Playboy. He wasn't a photographer yet. He was a he was working in sales on the north side of Chicago. Yeah. And I actually did something that today the older people still <laughs> talk about. Uh, this Negro quit a federal job. You know, the post office. He quit the job <laughs> to go to the north side of Chicago and sell clothing. Now, that was almost unheard of. I mean, a federal job was what we coveted back in those yeah. days. Mm-hmm. Um, but I started selling clothes um, on the north side of Chicago in a boutique. Mm. Um, and eventually, I worked my way up to Michigan Avenue, which is like Rodeo Drive. In, in a, yeah, oh, you know, the yeah. Exclusive. I'm selling women's apparel. You know, ladies' shoes, ladies' clothing. And a lot of my customers were uh, models, a lot of models, and a lot of uh, female ad agency executives and yeah. uh they would suggest and i'm in a suit and tie every day you know i'm, I'm at my charming my <laughs> charming desk I'm, I'm trying to sell you something yeah. uh, and they suggested that i had the uh, physique to be a model Whoa. and i thought <laughs> okay cool and my buddy garrick was a photographer at playboy i thought well, we'll, we'll get him to shoot some pictures mm-hmm. and, uh, and in my biography actually it says i got into this business to get laid because i'm thinking <laughs> <laughs> it says that because I figured, you know, I, I start modeling, maybe I can get with some of these models, and maybe I can get with some of these female ad agencies. Yeah. And, and I started making a living as a model in Chicago, and, and along that line, somebody asked me to do a play. Yeah. Because um, the lead actor had fallen out of a, mm-hmm. a play, a three-character, three-hour play. Mm-hmm. It's called Slow Dance on the Killing Ground. I'll always remember it because it, it, it told me um, who I was as an actor. I went in with only a week. To rehearse this role, this is and it had been truncated down to two and a half hours, but this is only three characters. Yeah, uh, three characters, a two and a half hour play, and only had a week to uh, do it. And I did it, and I got great reviews, and I had a ball doing it. And I remember the last line of the review said, uh, "We will surely see Stephen Williams in theater again." It first, <laughs> yeah, you know, it was my first um, mm-hmm. uh, theatrical project that was you know notable. Right. Um, and from that, I, I just started working Chicago theater. Chicago has some of the most wonderful, it's in the country. Mm-hmm. In the country. It's one of the best theater towns in the country. Right. You know? Um, so I, I, I think the first time I was on the Goodman stage, I was on stage with Robert Guillaume. Um, oh, man. So I like legend. to call my, my yeah. training, I like to call on-the-job training, because I never yeah. took lessons as an actor or anything. I just started working in Chicago. I was modeling and doing stage plays, you know, yeah. winning roles and doing it and, and just learning from the people that, that were surrounding me. So you, and then um, and then Hollywood came to yeah. Chicago, you know, with Blues Brothers and, and Cooley yeah. Guy and, yeah. and eventually that brought me to... So when you were young, I ain't, you ain't never really sold me. I ain't seen none of them pictures. You, you just one of these just one, just young, good-looking, one of them sweet, chocolate, brown uh, looking motherfuckers. No, no, no. Because I would have thought it would have been the voice more than anything, but when you was younger... Oh no! Uh, oh, if you, if you no, could was, model, what kind of stuff? What did you model? I was persona non gratis as a youngest. See, by this time, I didn't start modeling until I was twenty-seven. Yeah. That is old to start <laughs> yeah. modeling. Yeah, I was fully twenty-seven. I was out of high school. I, you know, did my army stint. Da 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 da. So mm-hmm. that's old to start modeling. Yeah. But I did a lot of catalog stuff. You know, yeah. that's back when Sears, Montgomery Ward. You know, Sears, yeah. Ward, Montgomery Ward. A lot of catalog stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, some ramp stuff. But yeah. mostly magazines and ads, right. you know, Jewel, grocery ads, A and P, grocery, yeah. ads, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, and but as a paid. youngster, when you talk about you talk about, I was persona non gratis, <laughs> <laughs> like high school, <laughs> high school brothers, my color with nappy hair, not happening back in the sixties, baby, <laughs> not happening. You know, I actually had one woman's parents tell her she, well, you got to stop dating that nappy headed nigga, that black nappy headed nigga. <laughs> Yes, oh, no. uh, you know, it was a high yellow, <laughs> wavy haired, you know, curly haired, yeah. you know, African American that was popular back then. We were not popular at all. 
it's, it's come to that point now where, you know, yeah. dark-skinned brothers with bald heads is what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> but back then, yeah. oh, no, oh, no, old black Steve. My nickname was old black Steve, as a matter of fact, in some circles. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, man. Showed a lot of them, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, there he is. That's what. <laughs> but you, man, like I say, the Jump Street chaos. Look at that. Oh yeah. Look at. Have you ever seen a group? But look at those yeah, eyes of everybody. Dip. Everybody got dreamy eyes. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a beautiful cast. Beautiful cast. Oh, yeah. Movies. What was it like? That was it. Holly Robinson, Johnny Depp. Oh, Holly, all of Johnny, it. Dustin. Yeah. Peter Eloise. Mm-hmm. Um. And who else? With me, Holly, Johnny, Dustin, Peter, yeah. Yeah. Five of us. And you had the original chief. cast, and they were, yeah. they were all brand new. They were brand new. I don't, I don't think any of them really had any experience when they joined that cast. You know, but Peter comes from Showbiz family. Right. Um, but it was uh, only Johnny's second or third project. I think he had done a, some small roles in some movies and, mm. uh, and Holly. I remember, you know, one of my first films that I did, was really funny, was with, uh, oh, my God, they got all kinds of pictures of me. <laughs> oh, I've gone through some changes, haven't I? Amen. But uh, uh, Holly played my. Levi did a shoot uh, movie, a TV movie called Dummy. Yeah. Based it, on a true story that happened in Chicago. And Levar, Levar Burton, and I, Levar Burton and yeah. I, we played brothers, and Holly played our little sister. Yeah. And she was like 12 years old. 12 <laughs> years old. And I, I remember that. Uh, yeah. Uh, her mom was uh, managing her to end, Dolores. Uh huh. Uh, yeah, so we went, we, Holly and I go way, we go back that far, you know. Yeah. We realize that later on in life, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, we go back that far. Mm. Uh, Dustin could, par- could barely speak English when he showed up. <laughs> when he showed up, you know. And he was a real, Dustin was a real Vietnam survivor. I mean, you know, doing that, that 75 Tet Offensive. Anyway, that, the, the news reels when they showed all the helicopters toppling and pin- yeah. trying to get out of there. Mm-hmm. You know, Dustin and his family literally were one of some of those people. Right. We did a story uh, on Jump Street uh, uh, relative to his story. Yeah. And I understand now that he's back in Vietnam doing major things because his folks were in show business back there. Right. And he's back there, and I think he's built himself a major movie studio and mm-hmm. like that. Um, Peter. Incredible human being, I think. You know, I will always say that Peter DeLuise was the most talented of, of that cast. Really? You know, he's a wonderful writer. He's a wonderful director. Damn good actor, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that boy, he did something one season that was beautiful. If you look at that boy's face, he lost weight one season. Peter's yeah. always been heavy. Yeah. You know, but he lost weight one season. He is chiseled. He was gorgeous. Uh, he was absolutely gorgeous. He was every bit as good looking as they say Johnny Depp is. Right. You know, mm-hmm. and... Uh, and I think, you know, a, a zillion times more talented than, um, you know, yeah. than a lot of folks. <laughs> mm. uh, yeah, crazy, man. man. So you had the X-Files. You had, you know what? Oh, uh, yeah, the X-Files. What was that show you did with uh, Carl Wilson? That's about the closest thing that you played to Quentin. When the, What was the show where you, where you took oh, over? Oh, with Carl. That was his show. That was Carl's show. Um, yeah, you arrested Street him. Justice. Yeah. Street yeah, justice. you took over the whole jail. I took over the whole jail. Yeah, they yeah. arrested my brother, and me and my gang broke in and then took the whole thing hostage to, to yeah. get my brother out. And, <laughs> and I got to fight Carl with us. I got to fight him. And it was so much fun. That kind of stuff was so much fun for me back then. Oh, you know? man, you know, I, I can like imagine. was like iconic to me. Yeah. You know, he's still, you know, he's mm-hmm. a beautiful man. Yeah. Beautiful man. Yeah. You know, uh, we had a ball. We had a ball. Yeah. yeah, now he was. That cat was very Quentin-like. Yeah. He yeah. just cold. <laughs> just cold-hearted truck. Lot of fun. Yeah. Lot of fun. What was it like working with Bernie? That was one of my comedian friends. It was one of the most. Now, see, about Bernie Mac, I won't say what was it like working with Stephen Williams. Uh. <laughs> one of the most gracious human beings that oh, I've yeah. ever worked with. Yeah. Very gracious man. Another God shot time, man. Yeah. yeah. Another shot time, man. Mm. And it was really funny that I didn't know of Bernie Mac or didn't know Bernie Mac in Chicago. I mean, we should have known each other because Bernie used to do that thing that Michael Collier did on the beach. Yeah. The comedian. Mm-hmm. Bernie used to work the L trains. From yeah, what I he did. He He'd, get on, they did a story. He'd get on the train and just do his yeah. comedy act on the train as it went back and forth. Right. Why I never ran into him, I could not, I, I can't phantom that because he had to be in Chicago during the same years. Yeah. And I did not own a car. <laughs> Those a lot. You know, yeah. but what a gracious, gracious um, human being. Yeah. Uh, and what a wonderful talent. Yeah. You know, sorry we lost him so soon. Yeah. A wonderful talent. Yeah, he's definitely is great. You know, and me, historic. Man. Historic uh, in that, uh, you know, that, that the show, the, him getting that show on the air, owning that show, you know. And, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and making some insistences. 
Yeah, because you know, they, they made him be, wait. I want to be, if I'll do it, but I need to have it da 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 this mm-hmm. way. And, you know, that's, yeah. that's a step up. Yeah, because they, they definitely they made him wait. And they, like that's they it. did Red Fox, like I say, when I. All right, okay. gotcha. Yeah. So, man. Yeah, uh, yeah, I guess he did have to wait, you know. Yeah. I guess it, it can be said about a lot of folks. I think I'm waiting. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still you waiting. Still being comfortable <laughs> while you wait. No. You know? <laughs> yeah, it's okay, man. I, I, you know, mm. I was talking to somebody about that last night about my comfort level. Mm. I'm at a level now where, you know, I don't, I don't have, you know, a ten zillion dollar da 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 mansion da 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 something for it, so on. But right. I work, and that's all I want to do. That's yeah. all. That's all I could ask for. That's the best I could ask for. Is that God gets me up every morning. Uh, my people get me out. My agents, managers. They get me out. They get me into a room, and I will nail a job. Yeah. You know, I'm that good. I'm good enough that somebody. I think it was Ron Howard. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if I'm if I'm misquoting you, Ron. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and I, if it wasn't you, but the quote was, "Be good enough. Be too good for them to ignore." Right. Somebody was talking about you know having problems with the business, and I don't you know, just. Just be too good for them be, to uh, ignore. Exactly. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And you will work. Yeah. You may not get to the, the pinnacle of stardom, or, yeah. uh, but you will work. Yeah. Be that, and I'm that good. I will always work. You know? Yeah, man. Like I say, I've told uh, many of my friends, just, you know, I've been knowing Steve a while. I go by Steve's house, man. I mean, I could, if I could just be comfortable with that, because I've known that it'd be a stack of mail there. You don't even feel like going to the bank. You call them the treasure hunt. I'm going to go over and shit. and shit been sitting there four months, and it's $50,000. It's like, I want to be that comfortable. Where it's just 50000 <laughs> in the checks. I ain't even cash. <laughs> I gotta go rest, catch these motherfuckers before they expire. Yeah, I'm, I get lazy sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I was, I was chuckling at myself once about that. Like, the treasure hunt. I, I was looking at it before I got the stamp, the stamp them. You know, I was looking at a stack because a lot of that stuff is just it's a dollar fifty cent in those envelopes, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm looking at them going. Damn, I got to sign all of this stuff. <laughs> and then I chuckled at myself. I went, Negro, you know, there are people who would kill for your life. Exactly. You're complaining because you got to sign a bunch of checks. What is wrong with you? Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. So it's, uh, oh, man. It's fun. Well, anyway, man, I want to thank you for coming out here. Hey, man. You actually carried this all by yourself. I knew you would. I just tried to ask a couple of questions. <laughs> it was my first show. I'm nervous as a hook in church, but thank you came down here. Hey, man, thank you, you for inviting me. Always. Man, um, thank good you. luck thank in the you. future. Always, yeah. Good luck in the future, man. Keep, yeah. this, keep this running. Let's get some people. Let's get some people in here. Yeah, let's get some yeah. people Look in. Look at short Miss Porter, Miss Marsh. She got gold records up there. She's a uh, and did yeah, her thing too. Get some fun him. celebrities and stuff yeah. in there and turn this place out. Exactly. Yeah, and the next time I come, I will not be hungover and I will take you up on that wine. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take you up on that wine offer. You know. Red, red. I'm a pin on the wall, man. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we got to go. Thank y'all for tuning in to Too Much Time. And we're sorry gonna get, now. We got the best in here. We'll be talking about controversial subjects every week, but we will have stars coming in there like Mr. Williams. And thank y'all for tuning in to Mars Media and Tuma Town with your host, Al Tuma. Thank you very much. Later. <laughs> <laughs>